Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. Heinrich has been experimenting with several different techniques lately and today's painting is no exception. All the materials used are listed in the description below. So gear up and come paint with us. The cans and rough paper is on a block and taped with masking tape. He wets the paper randomly with a Winsor & Newton Professional number 12 round brush. On the palette, we have raw sienna, cerulean blue and cobalt blue, all by Winsor & Newton. Then we have quinacridone red by Holbein and Payne's grey blue by Schmincke. First up is raw sienna and he dabs that into the wet areas on the picture plane adding some water as it goes to help spread the paint and to soften any hard lines. Then he adds cerulean blue and cobalt blue to bring variation in the sky color. He wets the brush regularly to spread the paint. Then he adds quinacridone red. It looks shockingly red to start with, but as soon as he adds a bit of water and spreads it, it creates the beautiful rosy hue in the sky. He uses some more water to spread the paint and then he adds the final touch of paints gray blue to give the darker tones. Now he wets the bottom half of the picture plane. He doesn't soak the paper, he just coats it with a layer of moisture, leaving a few dry patches here and there. Then he covers the entire area with raw sienna to establish the first layer of the foreground. He allows the painting to dry a bit. Then he uses a premix of cobalt blue, cerulean blue and quinacridone red to create the purple color of the mountains. Here he uses the Winsor & Newton Professional number no. 6 round brush. He adds the purple to the horizon line for the mountains and uses water to diffuse and spread the paint. He adds a touch of cerulean blue to the mountains and then brings the color into the foreground, layering it over the raw sienna. Be very gentle here. Just let the brush glide over the paper. If you press too hard, you will lift the underlying paint. Here he added a touch of quinacridone gold to the purple mix to create a greyish green which he uses to start the green layering of the foreground. In this painting layering is very important. 
It creates depth and definition. He adds a bit more quin gold and he uses diagonal strokes on the right to give a bit of variation to the terrain. He leaves a space open roughly in the middle to establish the path in the background. He adds some of the blue from the palette to the quin gold on the paper to create the various greens. By adding the blue into the quin gold, he can create various shades of green, which creates an interesting variety of color. He uses the Silver Black Velvet number no. 4 round brush and mixes some Burnt Umber by Windsor & Newton on the palette and he uses that to draw the roofs of the two houses and a rough outline of the walls. He mixes in some Payne's Grey Blue for the details in the houses and he uses the same mix to add some shadows and a fence in the background. Here he mixes some Payne's Grey Blue, Burnt Umber and Quinacridone Gold to make two different greens for the tree line in the background. Because it's very far away, there are no distinct details. He simply adds a few marks and lines to create the illusion of trees growing behind the houses. To vary the greens, he uses more Payne's Grey or more Quin Gold or more Burnt Umber. Payne's Grey Blue is a cool color, so it helps to make some areas recede, 
while burnt umber is a warmer color, so it brings some of the tree lines more forward. Using the two colors or three colors to help to create depth in the tree line. Here he adds some Perylene Green by Windsor & Newton to add a darker tone to the greens. He also adds some more cobalt blue to bring the sky and terrain into harmony. The cobalt adds another variation to the green. Adding these different colors helps to make the green look more natural. He adds a bit of water again to soften the hard lines and to help spread the paint. Here he uses the Perylene Green to establish the shadow line of the path and blends the color into the landscape. He continues to use the various base colors on the palette to add layers to the terrain, blending and mixing the colors on the paper to create a variety of greens.
He mixes some more Payne's Grey Blue to paint the more prominent bushes in the foreground. For these he uses the Barbara number no. 1 rigger. This is a very loose technique, which does not create a lot of pressure to do everything just right. It is a quite relaxing way to paint. Thank you for watching. Vaya con Dios.